Hi, and welcome to Val's Visions and Designs. Um, one of my very faithful followers, Kelly, uh, asked me if I would show her how I made a beehive using a Dollar Tree pool noodle. Now, I wanted a smaller beehive to go on a wreath, and you can, of course, make these so many different ways, but I just happened to have this in, the, in my stash. It was around the house, and I thought it would work. So the first thing that I do is I cut a piece of cardboard uh, to fit over the bottom. And then you've got to determine about how big you want your hive to be. So like I said, I'm, you know, it was for a uh, wreath, so I didn't want it to be huge. Now you can use the Dollar Tree rope. Uh, that's what I've been using for mine. Um, they're, uh, I noticed that they're changing the size constantly. The size of the rope is getting bigger and the rolls are getting smaller. Uh, but this is just the nautical jute rope. Um, then I just have a couple of little sunflowers. I got these from Dollar General for a dollar. You can get those at Dollar Tree. Um, the other thing that I did order from Amazon were the little bumblebee buttons, just so you can put a couple of the little bumblebees on your hive. So how I shape it, and I'm gonna make this one, oh, I've got my mat backwards, let's see. I wanna say I started off with about a six inch piece. Let's do, let's do six. And I just have a, a good, uh, <laughs> serrated edge uh, kitchen knife that I usually cut with. And uh, then I just kinda started shaping it and rounding off the top. So I know this gets a little bit noisy until you just round it to about the size you want it. So I'm just basically just cutting off and rounding out my little beehive, just so it'll be a little bit uh, rounder at the top. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because all of it's gonna be covered with rope now that is probably about the size that I've done been doing mine. So after you cut it down just a little bit, uh, if it still seems a little bit bigger than you want it, I would just cut it just a little bit more. Of course, this is messy, but it's real easy to cut. And I don't worry about sanding it or smoothing it off. You know, it's just a pool noodle, a dollar pool noodle. Like I said, it just happened to be what I had in my stash. Just going to even it out a little bit. Just so I don't have any real big pieces laying at the top. And again, all of that's going to be covered. So you can even take your scissors and just cut off that little bit. It, it's real, real easy to work with until you get your beehive about the size you want it. Now, if you wanted yours to be a little bit wider, um, I've noticed that Dollar General does have the uh, wider pool noodles also, I think, for a dollar. Okay, so the first thing that I do is go ahead and glue, and I've got my, my uh, glue gun on low, is I just go ahead and glue my little piece of cardboard on the bottom. You see, when I was making my circle, I got my marker all over it, but that won't matter because uh, it's all going to get covered up with rope. Now, usually I do the sides first, and then I'll come back and do the bottom. And then just cut open your nautical rope. Here's my little bumblebees. And then I usually leave a little bit of that tape on just so that edge doesn't get so rough. Let me go ahead and cut it because that's a, a lot of, of waste. Maybe I better cut it with a pair of scissors. There we go. Right, so I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of hot glue right there where I cut it. And that should help keep it from rattling. And then it's just a matter of taking it and wrapping it around the pool noodle. 
So I'll start off right along the edge where that cardboard is. And then just glue it. And then it's just a matter of continuing to glue. And wind your rope. Hold it for just a little bit. So you're trying to get it straight. And then of course this again is going to be covered. And probably the hardest part is getting started. Uh, once you get it started, it goes pretty quick. And especially since this rope is getting thicker and thicker. So right here where they meet, that's where I'll start my piece on the bottom, if you can see that right there. And this is generally what will be in the back. So I want to say it's been taking me about one and a half packages of the rope. But another thing that I'm really, really good to do is I save the rope off of my signs that I uh, get for my wreaths. And uh, this rope is really good for fill-in. Uh, if you need to fill in like a little spot, uh, I save all that stuff. I don't waste anything. <laughs> and again, like that right there where you have that, that's where I'll start uh, wrapping around the outer, I mean the bottom. And it's just a matter, I kind of keep my glue on the rope, uh, not so much on the foam, because I don't want the glue to seep through. And then every now and then there's these weird little pieces, because, you know, it's Dollar Tree. So I just kind of snip those away, and you just want to keep it pushed down tight. And just work your way around. So I'll pause while I work this up and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, now this is about as far as one of the ropes will take you. So we just have a little bit left around the top. So in order that I have my bad section on the same side, this is where I'm gonna cut off this last little bit of rope. Because again, I wanna keep the bad side all together so that um, that part won't show. It'll be in on my wreath. So now I'm going to bring the other piece of rope right here and I've just cut open another package and lay this one right here. And you may want to just press them, but you see it's not going to be real pretty where the two meet. So that's why you want to be sure that your seams are matching up. Um, again, just to, you know, to be sure that it's going to be uh, uh, very pretty on the front, okay? And uh, once you get started, it's a matter of just rolling with it again. And you can see the difference between the uh, the rope width. Uh, it's not huge, but I can tell just a little bit of difference uh, in the width. And so again, I'm just continuing to glue. I kind of run my glue right around the top of that rope and just wrapping around until we get all the way up to the top. And you will go through a lot of glue. Now I am using my low temp and I do um, use my small glue gun because my large glue gun just puts out way too much glue. And I'm gonna put a little, little tiny bit more glue right here where I started those two pieces over. And it's just a matter of continuing to wrap it said it really doesn't take long uh, as long as you keep it on low it, it, it's good you won't you shouldn't get burned sometimes I goof and I think I have it on low and it's not and it's on high and that's when I get burned I'm just continuing to push it wrap it hold it I'm just kind of rolling it along it's a very quick uh, very quick, doesn't take long. And like I said, it's using something that's very simple, uh, a pool noodle that you can mold and shape. Uh, like I said, if you wanted to make a bigger one, I made a bigger one for my wreath uh, that I made on uh, Friday on my, no, Saturday on my live. And uh, I actually used a large uh, coffee creamer container and then attached a piece of foam to it. But if you can find the larger pool noodles, 
uh, you could make it larger and you wouldn't have to use anything else. So I'm going to finish this up. Uh, you'll wrap all the way around the top and then just kind of twist it in and kind of push the edge into that hole. And then I always put a flower on top to kind of camouflage that. Be right back. All right, I'm going to show you how I finish out the very top. I've just been winding it around. And you just keep winding it around. And then once you get that last little bit wound around, I just kind of take it and push it down into the hole. Of course, as soon as you cut it, it wants to unravel. most part you can trim down some of that it goes up all the way to the top pretty seamless okay so now while that dries then I come down to the bottom uh, where I left off now this is actually a piece of another one that I had left because out of the two packages, you'll have this much of it left. So it takes just a little over uh, one package. So now I'm just going to come down here, right where I had started earlier, and begin. And you're just going to stay, sorry, new glue stick, right on the rope. And just continue to wrap around circular oops and you don't have to worry if it doesn't sit perfectly straight uh, as long as it's covered neatly because again this wreath is this is for a wreath um, this one isn't going to sit up uh, I just like it to look nice so I'm just then you'll start just adding your glue to the actual cardboard as you continue to wind in. And if you wanted to use, uh, you know, nautical rope that you pick up from Walmart or uh, another craft store, uh, you wouldn't have to piece together, but you really have to piece it together just a little bit anyway. So, you know, for one this size, uh, you might as well just pick up the Dollar Tree uh, nautical rope, unless you have the other, you know, already in your stash. And then again, I'm just going to kind of push it into that circle. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. Add my glue right to that center. And just kind of push it down in there and hold it. And I just kind of trim off the little phrase. A little bit more glue. And now your little B. Hive, or how did they call them another name too? Skype is is through as far as this part goes. Now the only other thing to do, you see, it's not going to lay, it's not going to lay uh, or stand on its own very well. All right, so the other thing you want to do, again, look real careful to where your seams were because you don't want that part on the front. You're just going to take a little bit of your rope and cut a circle about the size you want for the opening. Let me stand up so I can see where I'm going with this one. Just make your circle. That's a little bit bigger than what I want it to be. And just make, this is going to be the little opening. And it doesn't need to be very big for this one. I have my spatula.
spatula over here. I'm gonna press that down. And then again, the camouflage where I'm meeting here together. I'm just gonna take one of my cute little bees and he's gonna sit right there to cover up where those met. So these uh, these I get from Amazon. Uh, I think you can get them on all kinds of sizes and shapes and quantities. All right, so I'm just gonna put him sitting right there on the hive. Uh, now all you gotta do is you can take your Sharpie marker or paint, whichever one you prefer, and then just color in the circle. I just usually use a Sharpie. Uh, coloring it in black, whichever one works the easiest for you. I'm not real great with paint, <laughs> so I tend to be uh, uh, run to this magic marker a whole lot faster. But it's not going to cover the rope perfectly. Um, so if you know if you wanted to dab a little bit of black paint in there, you could definitely dab a little bit of black paint. And then I just like to decorate it with a few little flowers. So I just take a couple of these inexpensive flowers. And I know that I'll put one up on the top to kind of camouflage right here where it all came together. So I'm just going to take a little bit of glue. And then just kind of push that down into that little hole. Because uh, so the, the pool noodle is really neat because you do have all those holes uh, that you can go ahead and use to your advantage. So, and then, you know, you might want to decorate with another little flower, um, you know, just kind of push it in. I'll probably cut that nub just a little bit so it'll stay smooth. And decide where I want to put it. Just kind of push it right down into that rope. And then you could even add another little, say a little daisy. It just depends on how much you want to decorate. And just kind of try to push it down into the rope. And then just add a couple of little bees. Just a few here and there. I think I usually use about two to three little bees. Put one down here, and I think I'm about out of bumblebees. But this is actually, I think, my fifth one of these I've made, uh, and it sits down into into the wreath. Really, really simple. Put one little guy up here. Okay, so here's our little beehive. And the way I've been attaching it to my wreath is I've just been taking floral wire. Let me get my pliers. And this is the, the 22 gauge floral wire, but it can be uh, anything that you may have on hand. I can't tie bows with this, so I'm putting it to good use. I pinch it together real tight. Pinch it a little bit with my fingers. There we go. And then I just take my ice pick and I'm going back to the back where all the all the ugly is. Just poking a hole. I'll find a spot like that where I go ahead and we'll go right up here where it's ugly anyway. And it goes right through that foam. And then I just poke this right down in there. And now I've got a way to attach the little bumblebee to my wreath. And I usually do two, so I'll probably do one more right here. Uh, same way, same, same exact thing. And that will hold it real secure and you won't see uh, any of the wire from the front. So you can decorate it, make it as big as you want to. Um, so they're not hard, they're very simple to make, but they really do add a little flair 
and then you can advertise it as a handmade beehive. There we go. Poke another little hole. Just push that wire down into that foam. And then add some hot glue. That's it. Our little beehive is done. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, you know, as we all have our, our love of the bumblebee wreaths. So thanks, guys.